Welcome to our video tutorial on Directus. Together we will create a no-code job board application. Directus is an open source content management system that provides a flexible and intuitive interface for managing your content. It comes with a no-code interface to create databases, dashboards and apps, but you also have access to it programmatically using its REST or GraphQL API. Which means you can use it as a headless CMS, a backend as a service solution and even a no-code app builder, all at the same time. In this Getting Started tutorial, we will work through the step-by-step -step process of creating a job board application. We will cover everything from installation to the no-code app creation while discovering the available features from Directus. Are you ready? Let's jump into it. Let's start by creating our instance of Directus. So hit Login. Once we are in the dashboard, hit Create a new service. Let's search Directus. Select. Let's keep the default settings and hit create service. Once it's ready, we will receive an email with our credentials and the address of our service. Okay, so I just received the email with the credentials. I click on click here to get the password. And now I click on copy the password to the clipboard and I open my instance. My username is my email address of LSTO and the password, I have it in my clipboard. Perfect, so here is what we have when we arrive on our director's dashboard for the first time. We want to create a job board, so let's start by creating our first collection. We will create a collection named Offers, hit Next. It comes with default fields that are really useful that we will use, so we will check them later, but let's take all of them and hit Create. So here we have our first collection of job offers. It has the default columns that we added and we can add some fields. When we add fields, there are default type of field that we can use. It's very visual compared to real SQL edition. So we will start with an input. We will name it title. It will be the title of our job offer. We can add a default value, a placeholder for the input. We can add icon. We will add another field. Um, let's add a text area. So it's a bigger text and we will name it description. Add details to your job offer. Let's hit save. We could also add watch see what you get editor or a markdown editor. This is a very powerful. We will select a drop down and we will name it category. It's a string and we can add values available on that drop down. So hit create new. We will say front end or oh, the text is front end developer value. We will just set front end we will add another one backend developer backend designer and product manager we have settings so we can allow other values from the input by default it's not we can allow or not that it has no category we will keep it as is for the moment. And okay, now we will create a second collection. We will name it applications. Here we can also have the default settings, but we will bypass it for the moment. And we will add our fields. So we can add first name, last name. We can even add files like uh, the resume, uh, a picture. So I add a photo even if you wouldn't do it in real, but prefer a resume. Motivation. And now let's grasp a bit of the power of directors. We will add a relational field. We will use a many to many. Let's say we can apply to multiple offers at once. So uh, a job Offer can also have many applications from different persons. So let's take it. We'll name it offers applied, no default value. The related collection is the one we created before, the offers. We can define how it appears, so perfect. 
and we will just hit save. Now, if we go back to our data model, it automatically created a new table named applications offers, which contain the ID of the application related to the offer. But it's transparent for us and it works automatically. So now let's see what we built so far. So we will create our job offers. Uh, senior front-end developer. We are looking for a developer. It's in front-end developer. So you see we have the drop-down field with the value we defined earlier. And the status is what came from the director's built-in options. We could bypass it, but it's very useful. So when you create something, it's by default a draft. And once it's edited and you're happy with it, you can publish it. So let's publish it directly. And let's create another one. We'll publish it also directly. Uh, junior backend developer, please come motivated. Yes, it's the worst description, but you, you got the ID. And it's a backend developer. So, okay, let's create it. We have two job offers. Now we will create applications to those job offers. So I'm John Do. I will add my photo. So you see the interface, the form is built directly uh, from the database scheme and we can even fine tune it. We will see later how. So I add my picture. I'm very motivated for this position. And here we have the choice to uh, create a new job offer, but it's definitely not what we want to do. We could have disabled this option, by the way, or add existing. And we will see the list of offers and we select the one we want to apply to. Let's uh, select both and validate it. So now we have our application here and we have different options. We have the layout options. So by default, it was table, but let's say we want the cards. It automatically detected that there was a picture. So it took my uh, photo and displayed it, but we can see we have no title and no subtitle. So let's select what column we display. So we select the first name and the last name so it can aggregate the value, which is very useful. We can add space. Um, and we can write manually. So full name is John Doe. And subtitle, okay, just let's add uh, the motivation. Truncated, but you have the beginning of what I, I wrote. It generates a useful dashboard directly inside uh, directors without a single line of code. What other options we have? A refresh interval, so it can pull the new data and we can import data into our applications or export it with a CSV import. Now let's go back to our application. Here we can see the offers applied, but we have the number. So let's go back to our model inside uh, applications and we can edit this offers applied. We can go, we have many options. We can have interface, display template, and it's an editor where I will select the column that I display. So by default, it was only the ID. But me, what I want is to display the offer and the title. I hit save. I go to my application. And now in offers applied, I can see the label of the job offer. So it's very powerful feature. Now let's look at another useful feature we have. Here on the right, you have access to some information. So you see what happened on this application, who modified it and when. You can add comments, you can share it, and you have the activity log displaying everything that has been done to your application. You can add filters to see the creation, the update, the delete, the comment, who connected, when this is called activity log and it's very powerful. Now let's check our user directory. So what we can do is add users. It's using also directors under the hood. So you have the same uh, kind of forms that you can create yourself. So with an icon, with uh, a name, etc. 
I won't create one, but I, what I want to show you is that there are roles you can define. So by default, there's only one and it's administrator. But if we go to our settings, to roles and permissions, we can add a new role. Let's call it applicant. Do they have app access? Yes, but no admin access. Here you have very precise permissions that you can enable. So you can add the create access at the read, the update, delete, and the share option. By default for the directors uh, tables, it's predefined, but you can fine tune it if you need it. And when you do so, don't forget to give access to uh, the table that has a relation to it. If you only grant access to applications, you won't be able to select an offer. So you, you need at least to add the read option so it can attach it during the form creation. You also have a file library. Unfortunately, you don't have fine grain permission on the folders you will create, so it's either whole access or not. You also have a useful feature, which is called Insights. It's to create, without using code, dashboards for your team and clients. So we can hit Create Dashboard. Let's call it uh, Category Applications. We can choose a color. I won't add anything. And we will edit it. So we have a basic grid and inside we can add whatever we want to create our dashboard. So let's add a title. So job applications, we have some options, but here we don't mind. We can expand it and we have a title here. Let's add a metric. We can say um, we want to see how many applications we have. We just select the ID. We want the number of applications. So here, there is just one application. Let's add another metric, the number of offers. And here we have two offers. Of course, it's very basic because we didn't fill a lot of data, but you can have metrics with more advanced functions. You can add a time series, so you can do charts based on your data without even using code. On the left, you can find the documentation. This is an inner director's documentation. There are also the global documentation from directors available outside. So here it explains everything and it's very well done. It explains the context and all the options available to you. I highly recommend you to start by reading it before jumping into the creation of your no-code app. And inside the settings, you can add uh, some web hooks. Every time something happens on a table, like a create or on a collection, you will say, I will call uh, this web hook so my API will do something. So this is a bit raw, but you can do a lot of things using it. But they created something even better, which is called Flows. And it's an advanced editor of webhooks and automation. So let's name it Process Job Application. So I have different options. So triggers on platform or data events. I will check this one and it will do an action. So I will do when an item is created on the application. So every time we have a new application, this flow will be triggered. And now we have a powerful editor, so we can add a lot of condition and action to perform a smart automation based on our data. So maybe we can add a condition. So here we have a default one. So if the category equal to front end, if it's the case, we will do an operation. So we will send an email to the front end team and we will say, hello, there is a new application, please check it out. And if it's not the case, we'll maybe run a script and do something. It's uh, very conceptual what I'm saying, but you can see the potential that this flow automation made available out of the box and without code. Even if, as you can see here, you can always in every uh, block of directors, add some code. So here, where was it? Run script. So you can do whatever you want here and run your code. And overall, with all those data, it will automatically generate a REST and GraphQL API. So you have access to the global documentation of directors 
to understand how to authenticate with the same credentials you were using and perform all the operation you want. It's automatically generated. You don't have to code them. You just have to call the API with your client or your backend. Thank you for watching. I hope this video helped you to discover how directors can help you for your projects. If you like this video tutorial, please hit the like button to boost our channel visibility. If you want to discover new open source softwares, subscribe to our channel. We post content weekly. See you soon. Bye-bye.